Bowtie Travelers, welcome to Osaka. Osaka is the third largest city in Japan after Tokyo and Yokohama. The city is unique blend of ancestral traditions and incredible technological innovations. It is the central metropolis of the Kansai region and the largest of the Osaka Kobe Kyoto Trail. What makes Osaka an attractive tourist attraction? is that you can get all the excitement and charm of the country with less crowds and the feeling of being lost that accompany visits to Tokyo. There are many different ways to get to Osaka from Tokyo. The fastest, easiest and most convenient option is the Shinkansen bullet train which takes approximately 2 hours and 30 minutes. We didn't take the bullet train as it was not on our budget. We took the plane an hour and 30 minutes to get to Osaka. Osaka is known as the nation's kitchen and it's well known for delicious food such as takoyaki and okonomiyaki. The proximity of Osaka to Kyoto is another major deciding factor for tourists to visit Osaka. Kyoto, the traditional Japanese city and farmer capital of the country, is only one hour train ride away from Osaka. We spent three days of sightseeing in the city. In those three days, we have seen, amongst others, Osaka Castle, Number Parks, Shinsaibashi, Jotonbori, Shitenoji Temple, Tsuriyoshi Taisha, Osaka Aquarium Kayuki, Temples and Ferris Wheel, Osaka National Museum of Art, Osaka Science Museum, Floating Garden Observatory. We hope. This will inspire you for your next sightseeing adventure to Osaka. Day 1 Osaka Castle Number Parks Shinsaibashi Dotonbori Hello. 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 You're right. Hello. Hello. Our sightseeing journey through Osaka started from the iconic Osaka Castle. This castle is one of the most visually spectacular creations in the country, with a history that dates back almost 450 years. This is the famous 16th century Osaka Castle. It's one of the most popular Japanese landmarks. Originally built in 1583, after several destructions throughout its history, the current Osaka Castle was built in 1931, but the external appearance of the castle has still been preserved in the later iterations. During the war, it miraculously survived the citywide air raids. Photographers love to take pictures of the castle, especially in the cherry blossom season. And you'll see lots of pictures of the castle in different magazines about Japan. The 
The entire Osaka Castle Park covers about two square kilometers with lots of green space, sports facilities, multi-purpose arena and a shrine dedicated to Toyotomi Hideyoshi. The park is one of Osaka's most popular hanami spots during the cherry blossom season which usually takes place in early April. Inside the castle is a museum with eight floors of displays related to the castle's history. There are historical artifacts, colorful screen painting, samurai costumes that you can try on for a fee. Oh, so cute! On the eighth floor is the observation deck which circles the top of the tower and from which you can enjoy truly spectacular views of the city. After the Osaka Castle, we decided to visit Number Parks, 45 minute metro ride from Osaka Castle. Number Parks is a massive shopping complex in the Minami area of Osaka with a unique architectural structure incorporating plants, trees and flowers into its physical space. The idea is for shoppers to be able to enjoy a dose of nature while browsing boutiques. Number Parks is not your usual shopping mall. It's an attempt to bring some natural greenery into Osaka's concrete jungle. The building is composed of a series of uh, rising terraces and rooftop gardens on each level. If you need a break from retail therapy, there is an outdoors rooftop garden where you can soak up the sun. After number parks, we walked 15 minutes to Shinsaibashi. Shinsaibashi is a popular shopping district in Osaka with a long history as a regional center of commerce. It's one of Osaka's oldest and busiest shopping destinations which rounds about 600 meters in length. Shinsaibashi's collection of brand name shops, chain stores, independent boutiques, and variety of restaurants makes it popular with nearly every kind of shopper. This is a fantastic place if you have a lot of shopping stamina and high tolerance of crowds and bright light. Just a few steps away from Shinsaibashi, there is the one and only, the fantabulous Don Don Bori, the heart of the city. We are in Dottonbury. Dottonbury is one of the busiest, brightest, and bustling tourist attractions. We are actually in the heart of Osaka. The Glickoman, the enormous runner, towers over a Bisubashi bridge, is a famous Osaka landmark. The bright light and bars of Dotonbori 
drew huge nighttime crowds. Exuberant neon signs, plus an assortment of giant mechanical sea creatures and clowns looking down on the action add to the fun. The place is just full of people. There are restaurants and bars everywhere. Most of them are packed. And there are big queues. We had to wait about 30 minutes to get our ramen. The alleys and streets surrounding the tambori are packed with izakaya restaurants and bars. The crab restaurants here are famous. Osaka's obsession with food is often summed up with the expression Kuidaiore, which is often interpreted to mean eat till you drop, eat till you bankrupt. The Tonbori is said to be the best place in Osaka to experience this Kuidaiore style extreme love of food. So I'm about to uh, order my ramen. I get to, I guess, to put the money inside, yeah, and then to choose uh, what I want. This one, yeah. So now I'm just putting some stuff here. I don't know what it is. It looks like onions or so. Uh, I really don't know, but people are putting that inside the ramen. So um, I'm just following. I think it's hot. Okay. We're gonna try the ramen. You need to make those noise like So when you eat ramen you need to make noise with your mouth to show that you are enjoying what you are eating like <laughs> crazy mm. uh, it's hot I think I think I need a spoon Ram is a noodle soup dish that was originally imported from China and has become one of the most popular dishes in Japan. It's hot, it's spicy and uh, and hot. Wow, I, I like it. It's really good. Great. This will be great for, for hangover. The ramen was delicious. I really enjoyed it. Day 2 Chitoneji Temple Tsumiyoshi Taisha Osaka Aquarium Keiyukan Temples and Ferris Wheel After a crazy night of Kuidaiore, eat till you drop, we decided to concentrate our second day on a couple of temples. After feeding our body, we opted to feed our spiritual sides, and the best way to do it is by visiting temples and shrines. Osaka is home to famous temples and shrines in Japan. To visit Osaka without going to this spiritual structure would not make for a complete trip. The first temple we visited is Sitoneji Temple. It is Japan's oldest official temple. It was founded in 593 by the Prince Shotoku Taishi, a mayor figure in Japanese history who played a leading role in introducing Buddhism to Japan.
The grounds are huge, with many temples buildings, a pound, garden and a cemetery. It's normally peaceful and sparsely populated, but the atmosphere became lively during festivals and events. After the Shitoneji Temple, we headed to Shimiyoshi Taisha, a 33 minute metro ride. Shintoism and Buddhism are the primary religions practiced in Japan today. About 70% of the population practices Shintoism and 69% Buddhism. Practicing Shintoism doesn't exclude you from being a Buddhist, hence the statistics. An important part of the Japanese population practice both religions at the same time. In essence, Shintoism is the spirituality of this world and this life, whereas Buddhism is concerned with the soul and the afterlife. This explains why for the Japanese, the two religions exist so successfully together without contradiction. To celebrate a birth or marriage or to pray for a good harvest, the Japanese turn to Shintoism. Funerals, on the other hand, are usually Buddhist ceremonies. In Japan, usually the place of worship for Shintoism is referred to as shrines, and for Buddhism, temples. Sumiyoshi Taisha is the most famous and important shrine in Osaka. For hundreds of years, Osakans have believed that Sumiyoshi Taisha has protected the city for numerous hardships and delivered many blessings to those who have visited it. Each year around New Year's, approximately 2,500,000 people flock to the shrine for Atmode, a very important practice in Shinto where an individual seeks to purify themselves going into the new year. One of Sumiyoshi Taisha's most striking features is the large arched bridge called Soribashi. Soribashi symbolizes the connection between the realm of mortals and the realm of gods. As such, crossing Soribashi is an important act of purification for visitors to the shrine. While at the shrine, we came across a Shinto ritual and we decided to participate. We didn't understand what it was. However, we enjoyed participating. At some point, people were like washing themselves with pepper. It was fun and spiritual. I think it was some sort of purification or something. The next stop is Osaka Aquarium Keiyukan. It took us about 45 minutes to get from Sumiyoshi Taisha to Osaka Aquarium. Osaka Aquarium Keiyukan is located in Temples and Harbor Village, which is close by Osaka Bay. It is one of the world's largest aquariums and certainly the most impressive aquarium in Japan. Thank you. 
because the aquarium was so massive we had to spend a lot of time there gallivating through huge tanks of water containing different species of fishes and other animals the aquarium is organized into 15 zones which represent different environments around the Pacific Rim and houses 30,000 animals representing 620 different species including otters, sea lions, penguins, dolphins, whale sharks, rays and jellyfish to name just a few. The 15 zones are arranged in a descending spiral that starts with the Japan forest area and descends down to the Pacific Ocean level where you can view a huge 9 meter deep and 34 meter long fish tank which is home to a variety of species including the world's largest fish, the whale shark, with spectacular effect. Some of the tanks stretch over several floors, making it possible to observe the animals from different depths and perspectives. Our second day in Osaka are the Temples and Ferris Wheel, located near the Osaka Aquarium. The Temples and Ferris Wheel soars 112.5 meters into the air and has a diameter of 100 meters, making it one of the world's largest Ferris wheels. It was the tallest in the world from 1997 to 1999. That was only about 20 years ago. From the 60 gondolas that have the ferris wheel, 8 are glass bottom, making the tour even more thrilling. We didn't go with the glass bottom gondolas. I didn't feel good about that. However, this was quite popular. There was huge queues waiting to go into the glass bottomed gondolas. Day 3 Osaka National Museum of Art Osaka Science Museum Floating Garden Observatory Started our life sizing day with a visit to museums. On our trips, we usually don't visit museums, but we have a bit of time in our hands. We went to see the Osaka National Museum of Art and the Osaka Science Museum. Both museums are next to each other. That made it a bit easier for us. We started with the National Museum of Art as it has a particular shape. The museum's current building was designed to represent the growth and the shape of a bamboo plant. Most of the museum is located underground, with just the entrance lobby at the ground level. But it is easy to find due to its dramatic and very distinctive architecture. The museum's collection consists of 
paintings, posters, prints, watercolor, sketches, photographs, sculptures, works made from papers, crafts, and a small amount of design work such as furniture. Saka Science Museum is an interactive educational facility largely targeted at children. There are 200 interactive displays and science demonstrations under the theme of space and energy and a realistic planetarium. We walked 21 minutes to get from the museums to the floating garden observatory. Located between the two towers which make up Osaka's Yumeda Sky Building, the Floating Garden Observatory, also known as the Sky Garden, provides visitors with one of the best views of the city. The observatory is essentially a platform which serves as a bridge between the towers of this 173-meter-tall building and provides an obstructed 360-degree view of Osaka. From the 35th floor, you transfer to a see-through escalator tube that will take you to the entrance of the garden on the 39th floor. The observatory is located on the 30th floor. From here, you can overlook the Yumeda area and its surrounding during the day and see a breathtaking view at night. There is an open-air rooftop known as the Skywalk, highly unusual for the high-rise buildings. It is an observatory deck where you can actually walk outside. You can feel the breeze as you enjoy an unobstructed view of Osaka. The fence of vows on the roof area where visitors can fasten heart locks onto the fence as a romantic or friendly gesture.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel for more. Next time, we are taking you to Venice. Till then, keep traveling. See you.